Hey guys, John Grimsmo here, bringing you another video. This one is all about flatness. Now, in the eight, almost nine years that we've been doing business now, you learn more and more and more how important flatness becomes. So these are 10 things that we wanted to share with you guys about why flatness is so important in everything that we do. Hey guys, welcome to the flatness video. Come on over to the machine, we're gonna show you some reasons why flatness is very important to our processes. Um, flatness is essentially uh, a form and it's a theoretical uh, flatness between two planes. So that's how we measure it. We assume there's two planes um, and then parallelism can come from that. But we basically start with flatness and in this instance, we're starting with a flat table. So the most important aspect of flatness in here happens to be our table. That's our starting datum. So from here we stack up our, our vise, which has a flat surface, so we sweep that, make sure it's flat within a tenth. Then we get to our fixture, so our thick pallet comes on. That needs to be flat in parallelism to there. Then our parts need to be flat in parallelism to that. So everything kind of stacks up. And there's a couple stacks up in here that all relate to the end feature being flat. So parts coming from the lapping machine, it's critical that they're flat because that's gonna reflect in the part here. It's gonna reflect on this surface here, how, how parallel this is in the pocket. It's gonna reflect on the engraving depths. It's gonna reflect on all the pocket depths throughout as well as engraving on this side and a few other items. So flatness stacks up from the bottom and it matters a lot in this operation. Um, Flatness of little details like our uh, tool setter, flatness of that is critical. If that's on an angle, it's gonna assume that it's out. To those guys out there working machine shops, if you're on the floor, this is an incredible little guide. If you ever get into any discussions with the quality team and you need some references or something on your side to talk about, highly recommended. Um, you'll see this in a lot of shops out there. And so you'll see flatness in here is a form. So when you apply it to a surface, it's a type of tolerances form, and it's a space between two parallel planes. So our tolerance is where that can sit within those planes. It matters a lot because in an assembly, you're stacking up different parts, and if one of those parts is not flat, it's gonna show. Your bearing surface might not sit properly, and your knife might be a bit harder at the end, smoother here. Um, it could stack up on the way the pins sit in there ultimately everything so flatness to us means a lot in this instance we're constraining our flatness but we want unconstrained flatness coming off the lapping machine and in here whereas we're clamping them down we're restraining them to make them if they were bent you would push them down and make them flat but that's not truly flat so we're looking for unconstrained flatness coming off the lapping machine they come unconstrained flat onto here we can strain them but we're still that's only for to hold our 12 planes of movement so when you're machining, you want 12 planes of movement to be constrained. Um, that's gonna prevent any vibration, chatter, breaking tools, all the other issues you find. Um, so here, flatness coming from there matters to me and with the flatness I put out matters a lot to everybody else. So when you guys get a knife, you can be sure that it's you know, flat within tenths and the stack up will be within tenths. And the end product is, as you guys know, that glass action and a knife that just performs or works perfectly well. That's what flatness means to me means a lot to different people, but in machining, flatness is just another form tolerance that we work to and we try and maintain. So I hope you guys enjoyed that and hopefully that explains a little bit what we do here. So the next uh, important thing about flatness uh, that affects my job is uh, one of the big things is we really want our blades to be like dead center in, the, in between the handles of the knife so that on either side of the blade, there's exactly the same distance uh, between the handles. And so if we don't have completely flat parts, um, like say something's tapered, so one side is flat and the other side comes in, you know, at an angle, you're definitely gonna see that in the handles. Um, like in there, you're gonna see that one side tapers to the other. Um, so in a perfect world, they're right down the center. The, you know, edge of the blade is right down the center of the spacer. Um, and that just makes it you know, look a lot better and work a lot better. Also, if it is tapered or anything, um, if that's around the bearing track, you're gonna feel that taper on the bearings. Um, and then, so it'll be like maybe smooth down here and then it gets up here and it starts slowing down and getting all chunky. 
Um, so that's another really big thing about flatness. Um, and um, yeah, one more is that, you know, back in the day when we first started making knives, like we didn't double disc or like sand, you know, anything flat on both sides parallel. Um, so like we'd scotch bright the handles or whatever and then try to assemble them and put them together and things would just not go together properly. Like you'd kind of have to like screw everything in in a certain routine to get it to snug up so everything was flush and straight. And if you did it wrong, it would be a little bit off and it wouldn't feel right. Um, so, you know, getting perfectly flat parts is extremely important for, you know, proper functioning of our knives. All right, and another, uh, you know, benefit of having flat parts is, so we have these uh, pivots that we put in the handles of our knives and they have a flat top and they're supposed to be completely flush in the handles. So you don't feel them up or down. And in the past, like when we made our pivots on the old Nakamura lathe, they had a much rougher finish on the top. So I would go in and I'd sand each one um, to get rid of all the milling marks and make it look nice. But it was very hard to keep that perfectly flat and to keep the, like, the thickness of the pivot uh, perfectly flush with the handles because I was taking away material. Um, so after a little while of doing that, we finally got the Tornos, started making some uh, pivots on those. They look way better, and I decided just to try to tumble them instead of sanding them or anything. Um, so I just put them in this rack here, throw them in the tumbler like all day basically. But with that, it just smoothly beats everything down so it's nice and flat and even, and all the parts are perfectly flush in the handle still. So it's excellent. So we make our own pivots in-house from raw material. And when you start to make your own stuff, you start to realize more and more and more, like I've been making that for years and years, and I still learn new things about it. Uh, one of them is not only, Eric already talked about this, but the flatness of the pivot against the face uh, affects how the tension against, you know, when you tighten it down, how well it seats. And we noticed that if, if that inside face tapers for any reason whatsoever, then the screw doesn't tighten properly and the knife always has this kind of wiggly feel to it, like ever so slightly. So I went hog wild on making sure that that face right in there, use a saga clip as a pointing device, that face is as crystal flat as possible. So I've got a, a fusion clip here, I'll show you how to do it. Um, but yeah, I noticed that for a while. Uh, if the tool gets dull, if uh, the way I'm, I'm dragging the tool up the face, it does, it can leave a taper, especially with a duller tool, and uh, it just ended up to squishy knives, and we didn't like that. But now they are perfect. So right now I'm programming uh, my Norseman pivot, <clears throat> and I wanna talk about flatness under the head. This is super important, right here where my mouse is circling right now. Super duper important. Um, and I didn't realize this. So this is, I'm, I'm programming this for the Swiss lathe right now. So it's like perfect time to go through what I'm doing here. I leave uh, eighth thou on the front. I want to face it down to just past center line. I want to drag it back up. And on the Swiss, I'm lucky I can, I can drag this whole tool path. I can cut all that meat off in one pass. Uh, on a traditional lathe, you might want to do a bunch of different passes. So go this way, cutting huge cut. Uh, step up a little bit here to help it suck into the handle better. And then you can tell it's dragging upwards here. So this, if I just do one pass, this is where it becomes not flat. So what I want to do is I want to go back down again and just skim cut it again. Down and then up again and then finish it out. So that is my tool path. Here, I'll show it to you straight through. Down, across, up, down, up. Oh, that leaves such an amazingly beautiful finish. So when we make our fixture pallets, we start out with a big chunk like this, like two inch by six inch by 20 inch. They go on top of the orange vices. When you buy a piece of extruded aluminum, especially that big, you kind of assume it's flat, but man, is it not at all flat at all. If you take a uh, straight edge and a flashlight and you go under, and you can see it bows down in the middle like quite a bit. You know, we're talking 5, 10, 15 thou sometimes. So it goes to show like you can't just assume that things are flat. 
the more precision you're trying to get, the more, you know, that extra mile you're trying to go. If we put parts on here and bolted them down, the part would now go like that to match the contour of the plate. Terrible. So, yeah, it's, it's, it's crazy how much we take for granted when it comes to flatness and how much, you know, especially in our industry, we're learning more and more and like finding out that this chunk of cold rolled steel, there's no way it's flat across that plane. So we got to deck it, we got to make it perfect. Another point is level of the machine. This is more level than it is flatness, but it's kind of the same thing. So on our mill here, we have a 40 by 20 travel table, but the table's actually quite a bit bigger and you want it flat across the whole thing. And that flatness, I think Angelo already mentioned this a little bit, you know, it starts at the floor, flatness of the floor, table, casting, feet, adjustment, everything. And as you adjust the feet of the machine, the, machine, the table itself actually twists ever so slightly. And you want that to be perfectly flat. And that also affects uh, the lathes, especially a dual spindle lathe, because the two spindles, they have to line up exactly perfect. And a, a flat, you know, adjusting the feet kind of makes it in and out ever so slightly. So they've got some complicated leveling met methods. And actually there's a really cool device uh, they use for this machine. We'll see if they can, we can get a clip in here. Uh, it's like a, made by Big Kaiser. It's a disc like this, got a bunch of LEDs in it, and it's a leveling disc. And all the LEDs light up concentrically. So find a scene of that, it's really sweet. But uh, a classic old like stare at uh, precision level, uh, like a bubble level is also really good. Next point, flatness of the handles before lapping. So we started this business in 2011. The, we didn't have the lapping machine until like a year ago, year and a half ago or so. Um, we did a lot of crazy ways. We didn't even know that they were warped, right? Yeah, we thought they looked flat. You know, it's a piece of metal that's been ground at some point and it must yeah. be kind of flat. Like I used to buy 125 titanium, eighth inch titanium, get a water jet, then I get all these blanks and I was like, sweet, knife handles. Um, but even now, just holding a ruler, a straight edge up to it, not only is it cupped, but it actually wiggles a little bit. And I mean, what was it like assembling handles that had this bow yeah. back like, in the day? This is knife number two, Norseman number two. And so yeah, that has no double disc, no lapping or anything. So it was like just raw material, and then we scotch brighted the surfaces to make them clean and flat. Yeah, we just cheat. <laughs> yeah. Um, so then assembling them, you kind of had to do some magic to make sure everything with the spacers and everything lined up and cinched down just right to make sure the blade had, you know, free movement all the way without binding in any different areas from the handles being a little off. Yep. And then for machining too, the way I used to hold it down, um, maybe you hold it down flat, but then you release the clamps and it springs back up. So now your bearing pocket is, is off center right. or something. And in the beginning, we didn't even understand what was really going on, but now the more, the more we did it, the more we learned. Actually, that's really important. Yeah. And then I remember back like 2012, 13, like our knives were getting just a little bit better every day so that they would assemble and you can take it apart. You can put the screws in any order. You didn't have to fiddle with like, move it this way while you're tightening the two screws. Yep, and do them in this sequence. Right, like a lot of production knives become like that because uh, I mean, to make a knife cost low dollars, you have to cut a lot of corners, um, but we don't do that. Yeah, we want it to work perfectly every time. We want somebody to take the knife apart and put it back together, yeah. whatever sequence they want, and it's still exactly the way we send it out to them. Exactly, like sometimes yeah. I think I want my mom to be able to take this apart and assemble it, yeah. and she could do that, she could handle that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, flatness of the handles becomes really important. At the very least, um, send them out to get double disc ground, like buy thicker material, get double disc ground, but even we're finding as the bending clip, um, they're not that flat. <laughs> Yeah, they're, some of them are tapered, so they're completely, like, one side is way off from the other one. Yeah. So There's so much to this. Yeah. What's going on, guys? Uh, Steven here, kind of new at the Grimsmo team. A lot of you guys don't know me, some of you might. Um, we're going to talk about handle straightening today and why it's a super important part of what we all do here. Woohoo! yippee ki -yay. So pretty much, we're taking down all the high spots. These things are kind of shaped like tacos when we get them, so we need to make them not like tacos, make them more like tortillas. They need to be nice and flat, so that way when they go onto the lapping machine, they can stay nice and accurate. And there's no taper on them. So yeah, any little, uh, 
any little dust spots on here can actually bring this up. So we want to try to keep as much dust away from the piece as we can. Yeah, these pieces need to stay really straight from here. So that way when they go on the lapping machine, they, they get smoothed out there and then they go to the mill. So if these are off, the mill's patterns will actually not be correct. If you want to do a diamond on these, some diamonds will come up higher than others and obviously you'll be able to tell the huge difference between the diamonds. Hey guys, welcome to my segment of this video. I just wanted to talk to you guys about the importance of flatness in heat treat and I'll also be covering the importance of flatness in the lapping machine. Uh, but to start, we use this custom made quenching system. It uses an arbor press that we attach two custom machined aluminum water cooled plates to and they're milled periodically to get all this wear off of them. And we try to keep them within one thou over the entire surface. And what that does is when the blades come out of the oven at a red hot heat, they're kind of like lead in, they're super flexible. And when they get quenched in this press, you're just putting enough force on it to make sure that it's putting pressure on both sides. It's to make sure that they're cooling evenly and it also kind of squishes it so that it doesn't become a taco because either I or Steven will have to straighten them out so that it laps nicely. Uh, you want it to be as parallel as possible. So now we're over at the lapping machine. Uh, this machine, as I've talked about before, I guess I should re-explain everything because you might not have seen the other videos. It's got an iron composite plate that has diamond abrasive sprayed onto it. And then the parts roll over the diamonds, crush them into the plate, and it makes them super flat and super shiny. Uh, it's important that the plate itself stays flat. So you can see right now that it's actually kind of out. It's over three thou out in the center here, and then over two thou out on this gauge convex. So it's actually higher in the center than it is on the outside. Uh, and what that'll do is while you're lapping your parts, they'll get lapped to match the outness of the plate. So if your plate is tapered to a certain amount, it'll match your parts taper. So we try to keep a taper within five tenths uh, for parallelism purposes. And that just kind of helps everything on the knife fit together better and be more smooth and bearings working nicely and such. So this gauge that we use to measure the flatness of the plate is uh, zeroed off of the granite surface plate that is currently living as John's desk. Uh, it's the best reference to flatness we have in the shop. So it's the best thing we have to make sure that the plate stays flat. How's it going guys? It's Fraser here from Grimsmo and we're gonna give you a little bonus tip on the flatness uh, video here. And me and John kind of wanted to talk about the, the flatness of kind of the audio levels that I'm looking for. Um, so when I record, when we record audio into this lav mic here, uh, we work really hard to, to make sure the levels are very, um, very static and kind of hover around the same frequencies um, measured in, in dB, so decibels or whatever. And we look for anywhere between minus 12 and minus 9, minus 6-ish. Um, since obviously the shop is very noisy, we kind of want to make sure it sounds clean kind of all over the place. So we spend a lot of time making sure it sounds very good because I know sometimes we throw a lot of information on you guys and uh, it's very hard to understand if you, ca if you can't hear what's going on, right? So that's kind of a little bonus tip that we do on flatness is to make sure that your, your audio levels kind of stay over the course of time, kind of look very static on the, uh, on the timeline and I'll, I'll show you a screenshot of the latest video um, here just to, to kind of show you what I mean. Uh, they should all kind of have a nice flat even plane to them and uh, yeah that's the uh, the bonus tip for the flatness video.